Hi there, in this video we're going to take a look at all of the different ways you can log time within Mission Control. The principal way of logging time in Mission Control is via the timesheet. The timesheet gives you a lot of functionality uh, all in one place, so you're able to log time, you can collaborate via chatter, you can manage your checklist items, you can also complete actions once you consider them finished, uh, you can add supporting notes to any of the time that you're entering, and you can also convert Salesforce events into time logs against your projects, as well as approving other people's time. In addition to using the timesheet, you can also log time from the Kanban whiteboard, from the trackpad, you can also do it from the Salesforce mobile app, as well as from the utility bar within Lightning Experience and the sidebar within Salesforce Classic. So let's jump in and take a look at the timesheet in a bit more detail. You can access the timesheet from the progress pad of the Mission Control console or by selecting it from the navigation menu at the top. So when you initially load the timesheet, it comes to the timesheet tab. You'll see we've got three tabs, timesheet, calendar converter and approvals. Just to note, the approvals tab will only be visible if you have time logs that require your approval. So on the timesheet tab, it loads up uh, for, for you as an individual uh, project resource and it loads up for this week. What it does by default is includes all of the actions that have been assigned to you to work on this week, whether you're the action owner or a contributor. So looking at the individual field values, we can see that we're, we're able to see the project, we can see the milestone, the project action number, as well as the, the action itself. You can click here to access Chatter to collaborate with colleagues. You can click through here to access the checklist item manager to tick off any checklists. Once you've actually completed an action, uh, you can tick that box and that will change the status to complete. And you can also see here your billable and non-billable hours that have been scheduled completed or remaining from your own perspective. You can also see your action completion percentage, the ability to start and stop your tra uh, time tracker, and then across each day of the week you can uh, log your time and enter, enter supporting notes. So if we, uh, if we take a look and let's log some time here. So let's say I've just done some, uh, s some work on my design wireframes. I'm gonna click into here and say that I've done two hours worth of work. Now I can double click into this field to add in some additional information. So I can add in notes, as well as indicate whether it's uh, overtime or whether it is going to be uh, excluded from billable capacity. So I'm just going to leave those false and click on save. Now as well as logging my two hours here, I might say I've also done an hour here and I've also done two hours here. So as I scroll down, you'll see once I'm entering my, uh, my, my hours, I can see a summary for each day that's broken down between non-billable, billable, holidays, and my totals. And then I can get a total for the day as well. So you'll see down in the left-hand side, I've got a few different buttons. And I've also got a warning here letting me know that I've now got some unsaved time logs. Uh, so I, this is just giving me an indication that I need to save these before moving on. So I'm going to click on Save now. And that's gone away and saved all of those new time entries for me. Now, a few other features that you can do here, if you want to remind yourself of what you've done during this time, or if you're looking to uh, make any changes to any of these existing entries, you can click on the information icon, and that will let you access a summary of all of those individual records. So you can see here, I've got a few different entries here. I, I can indicate whether it was non-billable, overtime, excluded from capacity. I can, I can view the notes as well as the approval status. Now, I've also got the ability to, um, to, to save and submit my timesheet. So as, as I'm going through, through the, uh, my week, I can log my time. And then if I do require approval, I can click the save and submit button. And that will change any pending timesheet to submit it. So you can see here, I've got a summary across the top that shows me where all of my time logs are in terms of their approval. So clicking on that button will change any pending time logs to have a status of submitted. Now we've also got this save suggested hours button. Now you'll see if I look here, I can I, I get an, an idea of how that work has been suggested to be done. So I've obviously got eight hours and it's being spread across a number of days. So it's telling me that you know it could potentially be getting done across these three days. 
So if I wanted to convert all of these grade numbers into actual time logs, I can just click on the save suggested hours and that will create new time log entries for each individual grade number. There are a number of settings that you can configure on the timesheet as well. So if I click into my settings tab, you'll see I can choose to also include overdue actions. I can choose to uh, hide or display specific fields, uh, so specific rows within the, the timesheet. And I can also choose which of my columns are actually displayed. So for example, if I decide that we don't use chatter and I just want to hide that, it's just a case of, case of setting that and then saving that. Now, doing this on the individual timesheet only uh, modifies my own settings. However, I can also do that across the whole business from the co uh, control pad of the console. So if I go to the control pad and scroll down, you'll see I have the, uh, th this timesheet settings section where I can actually override everyone's timesheet settings and then control all of the details from here. Now, just looking at those settings in a bit more detail. So, as I say, we can we can pick and choose which columns we're we're um, we're, we're viewing. As well as that, you might have another field that you want to be displayed onto the timesheet. So, you can choose from any of the fields on the action object that you would like to appear, and that will display underneath the action name. So, you can see in my example, I'm displaying the total checklist items. So moving on, looking at the calendar converter. So the calendar converter will display any existing Salesforce events that you have in your Salesforce calendar. So for example, if you're using your Gmail or your Outlook calendar to keep a track of any hours that you might be working on, and you're syncing those through to Salesforce events through one of the, the various Salesforce and uh, calendar integration tools, these Salesforce events will be visible in Mission Control on your timesheet. And you can quickly convert any of these to be a time log onto a project. So it's just a case of clicking the clock, selecting the project, choosing the milestone and then the action, and then put you can put in notes and then log the time. Now, if you are using the approvals process and you have uh, time logs to approve on behalf of other users, you'll see the approvals tab. So you can click into that and that will give you a list of everyone that you need to approve time for. So you can see here I've got three time logs for Amy. So I'm going to click onto that and that will show me a breakdown of the uh, of the hours. So I can see I've got three separate time logs. I can identify how many hours, whether it was non-billable, complete, uh, whether it was overtime. I can see all of the notes. If I have some questions that I need to ask of Amy, I can jump through to chatter on the time, time log object. And then I can quickly approve all of the uh, entries or I can reject individual ones. In addition to the timesheet, there are also a number of other areas where you can log time from. So one of those is the whiteboard. So you'll see on each individual sticky note within the whiteboard, you, you, you have access to the clock. So it's literally just a case of clicking that icon. That's going to open up the component where you can, uh, you can choose to either start tracking time, where you can go away, do your work, come back and click stop, or you can report on what you've already done using the log time functionality. In addition to that, you can also do it from the trackpad. So uh, the trackpad is obviously available on the Mission Control Console and on the Project Overview page. So you can see I've got the same component available where I can where I can log my time. That same component is also available on the utility bar within Lightning Experience. And if we quickly jump over to Salesforce Classic, you'll see that it's also available via the left-hand sidebar. Now you can also log time from the Salesforce mobile app. So straight from the, uh, the chatter feed, you just click the log time component and that will allow you to log time using that same component as you've got available on the whiteboard and the utility bar and so on.